reptiles, fish and small animals. Pets always come first, according to the ads. We'd hate to see what comes last. At Pets at Home, as well as being trained to work with pets, 92% of us have our own pets. You make me happy. Affectionate cats, lovable dogs, cuddly rabbits. The staff in the advert certainly seem to know how to look after pets. And when buying one yourself, you want to be sure it's happy and healthy when leaving the shop. Pets at Home understands that, which is why it says its animals are all bred in comfortable and caring surroundings, then looked after by staff dedicated to their welfare. A reassuring promise, but one it doesn't always live up to. Meet Batman and Robin. Christina Sage bought these guinea pigs from the Cardiff to Glass Pets at Home branch as a present for her four-year-old son, Dylan. We noticed about a week later that one of them had a little spot on his nose and I wasn't sure whether or not he'd been fighting um, but then three days later Robin had lost all the hair on the side of his face and it looked all scabby and scaly. Her vet later confirmed that both animals were infected with ringworm and said they believed the infection was present before they left the store. Dylan's now forbidden from touching them whilst they undergo daily treatment. I'm not allowed. They're ill. It makes me sad. It's traumatic for my son who has them and he can't actually play with them and yeah, it's pretty miserable really. Ringworm spreads easily between animals and can be really painful for them. But more worryingly, this distressing fungal infection can also be passed on to humans. 12-year-old Chloe Cameron brought her two guinea pigs, Marmaduke and Oscar, from another Pets at Home store in Carlisle. Although Oscar had a slightly misshapen and crusty ear, staff said there was nothing to worry about. They were wrong. It was a couple of weeks and the crustiness got worse and it spread to uh, the other guinea pig, so we took them to the vets. And both of them, Marmaduke yeah. and Oscar, yeah. And they both got diagnosed with ringworm. Oh gosh. And um, after that, I started to notice a, like a circle up on my neck. Oh gosh. And I showed my mum and we took it to the doctors and it was ringworm. Mm -hmm. And they said that it was most likely I'd caught it off of them. Chloe already suffers from a condition that affects her immune system, so contracting ringworm was serious. It led to Chloe collapsing and she had to spend several days in hospital. That looks really sore. Yeah, that's the ringworm that spread. It went down my arm, spread all over me. It's very excruciating and upsetting. Did anyone else catch the ringworm? Um, when it was getting better, my dad, he caught it and it started spreading all over his back mm. and his neck. How do you feel, all in all, that you've been treated by pets at home? Um, I'm quite disgusted, really, because they should treat their pets and their customers better. And they shouldn't be allowed to sell any pets that have something wrong with them because it's just too big of a risk. It's just terrible. Chloe is now better and her pets have also made a recovery. But some animals don't. These rabbits, Frank and Wonky, died shortly after leaving the Pets at Home store in West Drayton earlier this year. To have two pet rabbits die within 11 days, one after the other, um, it was really upsetting. Uh, the first one, um, it was my first ever rabbit. He was so small and he was a baby. So I was genuinely quite upset. And to come home and find a dead rabbit, it was, it was pretty heartbreaking. And then my second one, um, I had him for, well, nearly two weeks and then he got sick. And he was sick, he started getting sick in the morning and then my husband took him to the vet and he was put down. I mean, I didn't even get to see him. My husband literally held him in his arms and he passed away in his arms. I do believe that my rabbit should particularly have been health checked. They shouldn't be sold the way that they are. And some experts agree. Mike Jessup is the former president of the Small Animal Veterinary Association. So, Mike, we've heard from three very upset pet owners. We've heard from many more across the country. What is going on at Pets at Home? Well, in these cases, these animals have been sold in an unhealthy condition. The whole remit and ethos is to make sure there's a health check before sale. They're clearly not doing it. These animals were unwell and should not have been sold. Pets at home say they know pets by heart and pride themselves on supplying healthy pets. Are they proud of these? Fiona Phillips reporting. Response from Pets at Home? 
Well, they've apologised to Caroline Parks and her family for the distress caused by the sudden deaths of their rabbits, but say that without a vet's report, they can't give a definite reason for the cause. They've also apologised to the families who bought guinea pigs with ringworm and expressed sympathy to Chloe Cameron and her dad, who both subsequently caught it. They say the disease can be present but dormant in animals for years, and it's hard to prevent as it can be contagious even before symptoms appear. They add that staff are trained to a very high standard, 92% of pet owners themselves, and care passionately about those in their stores. However, it's an inevitable fact that a small number of pets may become ill, but they're confident that instances such as these remain rare. So, isolated cases, we can now trust them to sell us healthy animals? Well, yes, and the RSPCA apparently agrees because they recently announced they're opening up centres in a number of stores to help rehouse pets and give advice to owners. They said both Pets at Home and the RSPCA have a strong interest in happy and healthy pets. Really? And they better watch the second part of Fiona's report. After talking to unhappy customers, we wanted to test out pets at home for ourselves. Our vet Mike Jessup, along with a team of watchdog secret shoppers, visited eight of their stores across Britain. And as he was to show me later, he found plenty of problems. In every store, our team came across fish that appeared to be suffering from disease. He should be out, he should be under treatment by now, because that's a huge crater hole in his back. In four stores we found fish with white spot, a parasitic disease of the skin, posing a hazard to all the other fish sharing the tank. OK, so our big concern here is that the disease will spread. It's a contagious disease and it will circulate through the system. So what should pets at home be doing with diseased fish then? Well, they first of all need to be under treatment, but to put them under treatment, you should isolate the tank, put it into quarantine, and that quarantine should stop the disease going anywhere else. The problem they've got with their setup is that their tanks are linked, so they are, in effect, spreading the illness round to a whole system of tanks. Diseased fish may not always be easy to spot. Dead fish are. We found them in seven of the eight stores we visited. More than 50 in total, all missed by staff, some even left to be eaten by other fish. Some of the worst conditions were in New Malden and Stockport, stores that proudly advertise themselves as specialist aquatic centres. It's quite surprising the number of dead and, and ill fish in this shop, with the number of staff that are buzzing in these tanks. I, I do find that just completely unacceptable. We've got death and destruction in this tank, with uh, one, two, three dead fish lying at the bottom. These aren't hidden, these are obviously dead. None are definitely dead. In fact, there's one being dead in there so long, it's nearly decomposed completely. I mean, that's a travesty of a display for a centre that calls itself an aquatic centre. Ten dead fish in one tank, and, and no one seemed to notice. Not only were there ten dead fish in there, but those fish were decomposing. They weren't taking these animals out as they were dying, and therefore they have no idea what's killing them. Uh, and so is it the water quality? Are they fighting? Is there disease? After inspecting the fish, it was time for a look at the small animals. This stuff here, all of them just seem to be a bit dull, a bit lethargic, underweight, and I'd be worried about their general long-term health. In West Drayton, Mike was so concerned about the welfare of two of the rabbits that we bought them. Later examination confirmed that one was underweight, while another had an obvious skin condition, a clear sign that the animal was not fit and healthy when sold. We also found problems with guinea pigs. This one, bought in Cardiff, was later found to be suffering from scurvy due to a lack of vitamin C in his diet. Throughout our mystery shopping tour, we also found some pets at home staff failing to follow their own welfare advice. This sign in the Carlisle store clearly states that you shouldn't keep an aquatic dwarf frog with small fish, yet we found one in a tank along with small fish. And this sign in the Durham store says Syrian hamsters must live alone, so why are there three of them in here? This face is appalling. There's just not enough. There's nothing for them to do. As well as the condition of the animals, we've also had complaints about pets at homes after sale service. 
Before leaving the store, staff are supposed to give customers all the care information they need, checking off everything they tell you on your receipt. Yeah, that's pretty much everything. But in half the stores we visited, the staff asked us to sign to say we'd received information that they simply hadn't given us. A uh, name, postcode and a signature there, please. So, sick and dead pets, hazardous conditions and staff failing to do their job. What's the vet's diagnosis? Well, in my opinion, pets at home are in breach of several of the important codes by which they are regulated. These codes are there for animal welfare. And the Animal Welfare Act very specifically says you mustn't cause unnecessary suffering and you mustn't keep animals in a way that might cause unnecessary suffering. I believe they are. So what should they be doing there? They seem to me to have too many animals, too big a range of animals, that the staff just don't have sufficient training for. And they should look to either increase their staff and increase their staff training or decrease the number of animals. It's just not acceptable. Well, Nick Wood, the CEO of Pets at Home, has since told us that our report is a huge concern to everyone at the company. Pet welfare is at the heart of everything they do and they deeply regret any upset customers caused by a failure to meet their own exacting standards. If they become aware of those standards not being met, they'll take it very seriously. However, he says they disagree significantly with many of the points raised by our expert and have invited him to meet with their specialist vets to discuss his concerns. What about the customers' concerns? Well, based on on the information we gave him before tonight's programme, he says they're reviewing health check training, they've increased the frequency of checks on their fish tanks, they've also replaced confusing signs in all stores, and will continue to monitor and improve every aspect of their stores and training. He's asked any customers or staff with concerns to call the customer service line, which is open until 11 tonight. The number is on your screens, along with the website address, where you can find the full response to our report. But I do have some really good news. You know those rabbit we bought from the West Drayton store. Uh, one was underweight, the other had a skin problem. And of course, that lovely little guinea pig we bought in Cardiff that was suffering from scurvy. Well, I can tell you, they are in tip top condition so well that we brought them into the studio. Oh, Chris. I and know. they're very happy and healthy, aren't they? They are extremely happy and Is... healthy. Come and have a look. Yeah. They're so happy. We're going to get them a little home, hopefully are you soon. Oh, hang on. Aren't you taking them home? No, Mrs. Hollins won't let me have oh, one. Look, you, see the I big see. one? Why We've named she him. Let you have one? <laughs> no, because I don't have any role at home. Right, this one <laughs> here, look, the big one. We've called him Matt. Oh, the small little one with little legs who's always eating and likes his tummy wrapped. That's Chris. Yeah. But one of them has become a bit of a prima donna. Look, got its own food, special supplies, and its own private dressing room. Oh. Oh, it's vanished. No, it's oh, there. It's there. Oh. It's a little guinea pig. There he is. Oh. And we've called him Andy. Good job. It's a bloke. Perfect. Thanks, Chris. OK, coming up, we know about the filth now for the...